Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our diagnostic training session today. Now, this is a pre-recorded session this week as I'm traveling, but if you do have any questions, if you're watching on Zoom, uh, just reply to the confirmation email that you got in order to uh, get the link to the class. Just reply to that, and uh, we'll get those answered for you. If you're watching on YouTube, just uh, make sure to leave a comment, and then if you're watching on Facebook, just feel free to leave a comment as well, and we'll get to those as I can. So my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Snap-on's National Diagnostic Technical Trainers. Been in the training department the last 11 years or so, traveling around North America, helping Texan shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, it was a couple years as a diagnostic sales rep with Snap-on. So I had about 30 different franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they service in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before I did that, it was eight years at Subaru. So I worked at a dealership and over time just became that default dyad guy in the shop. So I always ended up with the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth was trying to figure out all those weird head scratcher type cars that would come into my bag. And before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous French and jobs, been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. So our topic today, we are continuing on our OEM specific training series, and this week it is Tesla. So we've come to, this is our newest domestic make that's out in the world and uh, newest domestic make to snap on scan tools. So let's talk about it. A little bit of history first. And as I said, this is the most recent uh, major automaker anyways, in, in, a, in a way. So Tesla Motors was founded in 2003 by Martin Eberhard and Mark Parpenning. Elon Musk invested $6.5 million the next year and became chairman of the board at that point. And they produced their first vehicle, the Roadster, which is pictured down there on the bottom, uh, in 2008, and that's based on the Lotus Elise. Also in 2008, Musk then took over as CEO. Tesla also has a hand in solar and power storage. They have uh, roofing tiles that are like solar panels, and then they have the battery uh, banks that they have as so they began delivering the Model S sedan, which was their first major market car, mass market car, in 2012. In 2014, they introduced Autopilot, leveraging multiple sensors to achieve semi-autonomous driving. Remember, it says Autopilot, but you still have to be paying attention, holding the wheel and all that. They launched the Model X SUV in 2015. And then the Model 3 was launched in 2016 as a lower-priced mass market sedan and launched the Model Y SUV in 2019. All right, so let's talk about the top models. Now, I'm going to do this a little differently than I've done all the other manufacturers just because of they only have so many models. So we're just going to go through each of them. But um, what I found interesting is that the Tesla Model Y in 2023 was the fifth most selling vehicle in North America. Not just electric vehicle, it was the most selling electric vehicle uh, but you see the F-Series, Silver Auto, Ram Pickup, RAV4, and then the Tesla Model Y right there. And then the Tesla Model 3 is uh, down here. So just outside of the top 10. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Top 12. So right there. So two Teslas in the top 12, top overall sales for the model year 2023. So I didn't realize how far they had come in such a short time that they had gotten there. Uh, so if we look at their total sales, 2010 or 2013 to 2023, the last 10 years. Uh, Model 3, almost a million over those 10 years. Uh, Model Y, then the Model S, and then the Model X. And then if we go by model year, or uh, yeah, I guess it would be model year. Tesla doesn't really do a lot of like the model year changes. They just kind of make iterative changes along the way. So it's kind of hard to nail down where some of these things happen, but uh, I guess they do sell them as a model year. So uh, we can see that the uh, S and the X, it was small production, 2016, 2017, even 2018 and 2019. We see the S and the X are a very small portion of what they sell. But once they introduced the three at that lower price point, that was really the catalyst. And that really took off from there. So uh, we can see how it's that ramped up. And then when the uh, Model Y took off, man, like I said, number five overall vehicle in North America. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. So a couple representatives, as we always do. So I just picked the top selling year. And like I said, they, they kind of are weird about model years. But uh, the 2023 Model Y. So these are available in what they call standard range, long range, and performance models. All vehicles are all-wheel drive. And in 2023, the Model Y was the best-selling vehicle, best-selling electric. Oh, actually, the best-selling vehicle globally. So North America was number five. 
uh, globally, it was the best selling vehicle. 2022 Model 3. So it was introduced to be a lower cost sedan, as we said before. It's available in what they call base, long range, and performance models. The base model is rear wheel drive, and the others are all wheel drive. So to get all wheel drive on a Tesla, you get uh, dual motors, front and rear. 2016 Model S was kind of the high water mark for that. It was available in multiple configurations, uh, 60, 70, 75, 85, 90, and 100 kilowatt hour variety. The P models are what they would call performance models, and D models are the dual motor, the all-wheel drive. Uh, so example, a P90D would be a performance 90 kilowatt hour all-wheel drive vehicle. That's how they kind of lay out their, their uh, different sub-models. And the Model S was Tesla's first mass market model. Then we have the 2017 Model X. This is the one with the gold wing doors in the back. So it was available in multiple configurations. Once again, 75, 90, and 100 kilowatt hour varieties. P models are performance models, and the D models are dual motor. So in that case, a P100D would be a performance 100 kilowatt hour all-wheel drive vehicle. And like I said, uniquely has rear gold wing doors. The only model that. <laughs> Some common issues. Really researching them other than... I mean, a lot of fit and fitment stuff, fit and finish type stuff. Uh, there's a lot of that. Uh, of course, battery issues, because it's basically a rolling battery. Uh, autopilot issues, and we've heard all that stuff in the news where it doesn't always do what it's supposed to do, and they've done numerous updates and fixes and bug fixes. And uh, software and firmware issues. It seems like most of the problems with these vehicles are going to be software related. And a lot of times the fix for it is Tesla will send a software update to the affected system and that'll just fix the problem. You're also going to see when we get into the scan tool, a lot of this, a lot of the uh, functions that you're able to do are resets, reset the ECU, hard reset, soft reset. So a lot of times that can just fix the problem and the way they present codes is unique and everything like that, which brings us into our OEM specific features that I want to talk about. So one of the most unique things I would say in our space that we'd be you know, kind of dealing with like as the aftermarket, Tesla continually their business model. So they continuously update their hardware, not following a model year's traditional automaker. So when they have something new that's developed, they put it on the car rolling in production and they just move on from there. They also don't follow the traditional dealership model. So um, you don't really have a place to go to bring your car. And oftentimes you buy them, they have, they have centers, they do a service centers but it's not a traditional dealership like we'd be used to. And service is usually remote diagnostics, like I said, uh, with a mobile tech sent out for more difficult issues. So they'll actually, there's uh, Tesla vans around that will uh, go out and they'll have, you know, they'll have some parts or they'll go out and uh, just do, you know, change your tire on the side of the road or whatever it happens to be like that. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily uh, something I'd call a technician out for. They could probably do it themselves. But um, as far as that's their general OE repair model, right? That's what they're going to do. Uh, now, if you're an after, you're in an aftermarket shop, it's going to be a little bit different. I mean, diagnosing the car is going to be similar, but different. Uh, so as far as diagnosis capabilities, so the S and the X models have an OBD2 port until 2020. The three and the Y models have a proprietary connector. All models can do some diagnosis through the touchscreen. So it actually, actually is pretty in depth, pretty well in depth you can do. There's a whole manual online you can read through how to do it. Uh, for more involved diagnosis, there's also a service mode plus for a fee. So it's $165 a day, $500 for a month, $3,000 for a year. And that gives you software that you can hook up to a laptop to plug in as well. Uh, service info is generally pretty readily available. So they have their website, service.tesla.com. And then Shopkey also has information. Shopkey Mitchell also has a lot of information on Tesla as well. Uh, so if you have a subscription to shop here, Mitchell, Tesla was added well, maybe a year or two ago. And uh, we do have information on it in there. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, also with the subscription, it gives you service mode plus, like I said, so you can get a little bit deeper. Uh, place a vehicle in advanced diagnostic mode with additional features such as live can viewer. So like I said, a lot of network and computer type issues uh, would be the major issues they would have. Also theory and operation and stuff like that. So some tips from a tech with that, uh, that brings us to a diagnostic strategy. So this is right from Tesla's book. There are many tools that can be used to diagnose a Tesla. Some are offered by Tesla, such as using free diagnostic software application called service mode that's equipped on all Tesla vehicles. 
and runs on the touchscreen. Or you can purchase that diagnostic software subscription for access to toolbox and additional tools and resources. Alternatively, a diagnostic scan tool can be purchased from a third party like Snap-on. Uh, below is a recommended process to diagnose the Tesla vehicle. Enter service mode, following the instructions in the service manual. Use service mode to view the recently asserted alerts on the vehicle. Read the troubleshooting description on the touchscreen within service mode. Like I said, a lot of this takes place on the touchscreen. If the path to repair is still unclear, purchase a diagnostic software subscription to access the diagnostic article for the alert within toolbox to view more information and common possible contents. So that's how they want you to go through there. As far as OEM specific functions on the scan tool itself. So I, I figured the things a giant rolling battery. So what are some things we can do on that? So there's a lot of clear counters and uh, contact counters, things like that. Uh, reset specific alert codes. So we'll look at alert codes in a little bit and how they're laid out. So like a W1563 is an alert code. And then that would just reset whatever, set that off. Also refill and drain coolant in the uh, coolant system because there is a battery coolant for that. And then coolant air purge. So if you do have to refill the coolant, um, you'd have to purge the air out of it, of course. Some other tests that would be applicable on the vehicle as well. We've got air suspension. Uh, which is set ride height, read the pressures for diagnostic purposes, uh, occupant detection reset. So for the passenger seat, you know, to re reset it to zero and TPMS learn. So they do have tire pressure monitoring sensors. They are a little different. They're actually Bluetooth, not a radio frequency like the other, uh, other TPMS sensors that you might be used to, uh, but they do use a Bluetooth low energy uh, TPMS sensor, but it looks just like a, any other TPMS sensor. So. It's just, they just do it a little bit different. All right, so let's go live on the tool and see some stuff that we can see. I'm gonna go through each of those vehicles that we looked at before. Uh, I'm gonna start with the 16 Model S. So on a 16 Model S, it would have a diagnostic connector underneath the dash, so I can go in there. Uh, we have the option to display the active ECUs or display all ECUs. I'm just going to display all that could possibly be on there. Code scan, clear, clear, uh, clear codes read by code scan, electronic parking brake, occupant classification system, and so on and so forth. You can see all the way down through all of these different things. Uh, so things like I mentioned, the air suspension, right? You go in there, special functions, set ride height, soft resets, reset ECU, hard reset, pressures, Etc. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of those resets in a lot of these modules. So I'll just go back to say like so electronic parking brake, right? So codes and special functions, special functions are resets. Because you can do a lot of the stuff on the touchscreen itself. Occupant classification system, same thing, you know, hard and soft resets. Uh, classification system re zero. TPMS. Special functions, so TPMS IDs, uh, auto learn start or auto learn by VIN or reset, e reset the ECU. Um, so things like autopilot, right? Codes, resets, codes and resets. Uh, and then down here, we have some information on alerts. So here's what alert codes are. So, so to display service alerts, first enter service mode and then tap service alerts. Service alerts are divided into two categories, service fix and customer. Service fix alerts can include important issues along with non-issues, so that's fun. It's common to see service fix alerts that are not important. That's wonderful. Uh, customer alerts are the same as those that show up on the display during normal vehicle operation. So those are different alerts. Uh, and then also there is service mode. We tell you how to get into service mode to enable it and disable it. So you go in there on the touch screen, go to software, Image of the vehicle and badge is displayed. Touch and hold the word model on the badge for two seconds, then release it. And then you get an on-screen keyboard pop-up, type service in the access code and then touch OK. And then it will get you into service mode. And then to get out, you just hit exit service. And then for some repairs, you may need to get a little further and open the gateway. So there's a gateway on it. So in order to unlock it, uh, gateway lock to be displayed on the instrument cluster and media control unit. The procedure unlocks the gateway using the touch screen. So once you're in service mode, press and hold the brake pedal, then push and hold the turn signal stock fully up for at least 10 seconds. Then the instrument cluster and uh, media control unit will briefly display gateway unlocking. Once it's unlocked, instrument cluster will display gateway unlocked and a countdown timer will display the remaining time in seconds. 
that the gateway continues to be unlocked for a max of 90 minutes. I don't know why it shows it in seconds. It's like 5,000 seconds, but uh, 90 minutes max. Gateway will lock when the timer is elapsed or when leaving the vehicle and closing the doors. The gateway needs to be unlocked for a longer period of time. Repeat the unlocking gateway. So we give you tips on how to do that as well. So like I said, a lot of stuff in there. Also in guided component tests, we have uh, ABS at the moment to start. So things like the ABS module, brake fluid level switch, uh, wheel speed sensors, yaw rate sensors, etc. You see all that in there. And then we also have, like I said, ShopKey has information on these too. And this is where we'd normally go anyways, looking for sure track information. So it's a 70D, electric vehicle. And then there we go. So we have still, you know, still TSBs, common specs, fluid capacities, if any, there's not a lot, but it's full service manual. Uh, and then we see based on analysis of seven repairs. So the way that this gets filtered out, you know, sure track uses the thousands and thousands. A, I'm not sure how many are being in aftermarket shops uh, for repairs. And then B, every model is broken out separately. So that's a 70D. If I wanted to go to a, uh, like a 60D, so we had seven on a 70D and we have one on a 60D. So it every single sub model is broken out separately. So just be aware of that. If it seems like there's not a ton of uh, repairs on them, that's probably why, because it's specific to how many different uh, different ones they have. Now, uh, pads and rotors, that's probably pretty common. Tire pressure sensor, right? Battery, headlight bulb, headlights in op. And then over here, it's uh, interesting because this is what people plug in to search for. So a lot of things like control arms, uh, so suspension stuff, driving lamps, power window motor regulator. I saw that there was like a bulletin on that as well. Um, so there's some weird things like that that'll show up on the car. It's just, and it just that's how you fix it. Now, if I wanted to go look at my codes, these are the alert codes like I talked about, and they present them in a totally different way, you see, right? So BMS would be body management system, and then it's uh, F104 HW BMB enumeration. SWBMB communication. So software's uh, SW software, HW's hardware. And you can see it just goes through battery management system, charging system, uh, DI, driver information, I'm guessing that might be, uh, electronic parking brake, ESP, gateway. And then you can see they kind of have a description. So if I had a, let's see, MCU, right? Uh, so brake fluid low. It's going to say whether or not it's shown to a customer, what the text is, and so on and so forth. You can go through. So, um, so they present things a little bit differently because they never had traditional gasoline engines, never had to follow emissions, that sort of thing. So it's similar, but different. And it's different enough if you you know learn enough about it. It shouldn't be too difficult to go. All right, so that's the S. We'll go through the X. Now the X is going to be very, very similar. Very, very similar because basically they use the same computers for just about, you know, everything, every computer, like the battery management system computer is going to be the battery management system computer until they decide to change a hardware chain. All right. So it's going to have a lot of the same stuff in there. Right? So like Tesla thermal control. So this is where you would go in for like your refill or drain on the coolant, uh, coolant air purge, that sort of thing. So you can go in there. And then if I go in, guided component test will be the same. All right, so it's ABS. It's going to be the same ABS system pretty much. If you go on a sure track, uh, let's say like a 90D, sure. And then we see in this case, 22 repairs, right? So that was much more common. Uh, wheels, tires, AC refrigerant, brake pad wear sensor, window regulator is the number one search under that, coolant pump, right? So that would apply when I have to do the coolant. Oh, uh, wiring diagrams too. So wiring diagrams, it's gonna be 
actually the Tesla wiring diagram. So if I wanted to look at like braking instability, so these are the Tesla wiring diagrams in here. All right, so you can see that trunk. Always love that front trunk trunk. Okay, and then that's so that's the X. Now let's look at what happens when I go into a vehicle without a diagnostic connector. So you can still ID it. You can still go into scanner if you want, but it's gonna have alerts, gateway and cert service mode that I showed you earlier, because those vehicles are diagnosed through that touch screen exclusively. Let's look at repair information. We'll just call it a base, I guess. And 248 repairs. Remember, this is also a very highly selling car. So 2022 with 248 repairs, those are going in aftermarket shop. Uh, tail light, antenna, TPMS again. Uh, right window and op. That seems to be showing up an awful lot. Uh, engine doesn't start, window and operative, uh, TPMS. Well, engine doesn't start. That's kind of weird, but maybe it's just that it doesn't roll, I guess. Uh, alignments, pads, that sort of thing. And then let's look at the Y. Uh, no Cybertruck coverage at this time because they haven't sold that many of them. Just long range. I'm sure it'll come in the future, but right now, it won't. Just long range. 130 repairs on that. One. Right, so traction motor. So that's the actual electric motor. TPMS, vehicle pulls, TPMS, uh, suspension control arm, suspension stabilizer bracket, right? So there's you know, some suspension repairs to do on those as well, which you might need that air suspension work. So that is the long and the short of Tesla. So I think it's kind of interesting researching it and uh, learning a little bit more about how they do things. They do things a little bit differently. Um, so just as long as you can keep that in mind, um, you'd still be able to go through and diagnose. You don't have to worry so much about like firing order and fuel, air fuel ratios and stuff like that. But I mean, it's, it's works pretty much like any other electric car that you would have to deal with if you're doing electric car work. So, um, with that, that concludes today's presentation. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about next week. So next week we are continuing on our OEM specific series with Volvo. So this will be our last European make in this series. Uh, so uh, we'll just go through all the usual suspects as we went through tonight. So 6 p.m., 6 and 9 p.m. Eastern, 5 and 8 Central, uh, every single Tuesday. If you want to join on Zoom, go to snapon.com slash OT to sign up over there. Otherwise, the 6 p.m. class goes live to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snapon diagnostics. Otherwise, the uh, 9 p.m. class goes live to my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash uh, snap on Jason, all one word, no dash with the snap on. And then if you want to see any of our previous topics in this series, anywhere from ADOS all the way down to TPMS testing and beyond, episode 100 will be coming up after that Volvo episode. So uh, this is actually 98, Volvo will be 99. So if you want to catch up on any of these, need a refresher, any of that stuff, um, youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics, there is a playlist for that. If you scan that QR code, it'll bring you there and subscribe you automatically. Also, do we have your email address? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. If we don't, however, uh, you may be missing out or you are missing out on uh, some other good diagnostic content as well. Things like tech focus articles, sure track blogs, quick tips, new product release announcements. Uh, they'll send out my training schedule, I think monthly. Uh, so if you, we don't have your email address and you're not getting those, you can scan that QR code and then that'll bring you to a form where you can go and fill out your information and then be added to the list and start getting that valuable content like this example technical focus article on timing chains and diagnosing stretch timing chains. That could be very useful. All right, we're up to questions. And as I said at the beginning, I am currently traveling this week. So this is pre-recorded. So if you do have a question on Zoom, just reply to the confirmation email. If you have a question on Facebook, leave a comment underneath the video. And if you have a question on YouTube, same thing, leave a comment and I'll get to those as soon as I'm able to. I also want to mention my buddy Keith, who also does free diagnostic training. His is scan tool specific. So every Wednesday, it's on Zeus and Zeus Plus. And every Thursday, it is on Apollo and Triton tools. 
So he walks you through everything, basically soup to nuts. So let's get your Wi-Fi set up. Let's talk about Security Link. Let's talk about Snap on Cloud. Then he goes through the complete fast track intelligent diagnostics workflow, uh, among some other different things in there, scanner related stuff. That's about the first hour. And then he takes about a five minute break. And then after that, he goes through about another 45, 50 minutes on the scope and the meter functions of the corresponding tools. So uh, definitely worth your time to check it out. If you want to learn more about your own tool or you're interested in you know, changing up, changing out a tool or whatever the case may be, uh, we have people that come almost every week just to uh, you know, keep keep up to date and refresh. Essentially the same class every week, but you know, maybe you have some questions. You can also ask questions in those classes too. So. Uh, definitely check that out. Zoom only, snapon.com slash OT to register. And with that, thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me. Hopefully you learned uh, some new tidbits about Tesla. Hopefully you'll join me next week for Volvo. With that, enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. Have a nice night and take care.